Well, Banned Spirits and two copies of Is It Phoenix on the other side. You can see the uh, hack on side uh, oh, already they know. laughing. There's, they, they already know the joke. This and gift you know, deck has a... We'll, we'll just name the cards as they play them. That's what we're going to watch. It's going to be Mark Larson and Pete Ingram. Jessup, Ingram, and Scarin. They're, they aren't slouches, so they think this feature match is for them. <laughs> 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 they, don't know, <laughs> they don't know what's coming. <laughs> Not oh that no. they aren't oh deserving. No. Right, they've had their share of camera time, but but we're here for the Knights. All right, so Mark winning the die roll. Starts on Marsh Flats into Overgrown Tomb into Birds of Paradise. The old Devoted Druid combo, right? This is kind right, of what you're thinking That's what you think? Spot. Yeah, it looks like the Devoted Druid deck. Okay, sure. Yeah, I buy that. This is, you know, normal playing for day two things. If I'm playing Is It Phoenix, I'm happy to see this matchup. Yeah, they just play a bunch of creatures, and you kill them, and then you kill them. Right. So Mark's deck is four Birds of Paradise, four Gifts Ungiven, and the rest of the deck is Highlander. Okay. Do you, I guess he, no, he, he's, dub he's doubled up on some fetch lands. I have to apologize. All right, so That's it. What if we just read this deck list like we're trying to sing along to End of the World as we know it by <laughs> REM? Well, you'd get to the end by about the end of the round. Yeah, I can't do it. I want to. I start In my head, I prepared myself with the rhythm. Gut shot from Frank takes care of Birds of Paradise. Finds that off Serum Visions. And to think, we thought they read the metagame. <laughs> And we'll see Duress from Mark. Remember, they're all one-ups. Okay. Just birds and gifts are not. Everything else is. Little and it misses. No, it took, uh, it take, took the Faithless oh, Looting okay. here. Takes Faithless Looting. So we see lands 2, 3, 4, Thing in the Ice, and Crackling Drake. That's almost a curve. <laughs> oh, with the Faithless Looting, it is a curve. Right. Okay. You yeah, yeah you have 2, two three, you four. Your 3, you got your 4. The Nameless Inversion may be a bit awkward in this type of matchup. If he gets that engine online, it's most of the deck cards out of Is It Phoenix are X4s. Well, you get to cast Nameless Inversion twice. Yeah. It kills him. You're just building a just dismember. Build, you just keep going. It's a four-mana dismember, but it didn't cost any cards, so it's fine. Oh, that's nice. Mark's follow-up Inquisition of Kozlek takes Thing in the Ice. Ruining the curve. And third land, and he'll pass back. Eternal Witness, white-bordered cards, yeah. something else in hand. Okay. I am not, I could, you could not pay me to speculate on what else is in <laughs> what, his hand. Which of these cards could be white-bordered? Oh, have, my. Let's do we have see. A dart? Do we have a dart that we can throw here? You know, he plays one Wrath of God. That's a card that's frequently... There are a lot of white-bordered printings of that one. That's true. That card was has what? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven... Seven white border is it printings. Just, it's just corsets. Yeah, I was always just white border printings. Okay. Oh, but it was in beatdown. It's in masters? some yeah. It's in some, right. some supplemental. So I think it might be in a couple dual decks. Those are black border. Those are black bordered. Listen, we kids get our reprints in black border. I just, I, yeah, you just white border them then. That's what I do with my cards. Listen here, Pepperidge Farm. <laughs> <laughs> Any card is a white border card if you wish hard enough. Or use an eraser for several hours in a car. Yeah, I can't Who would do that? Well, here we are on the SCG <laughs> tour featuring <laughs> Matthias Hunt, white borderer of cars in the back of cars. We have Eternal Witness from Mark Larson going to grab back that duress. It's an interesting decision, but you know the Inquisition is less likely to hit than the duress is here. We go back to Scarin. Has not made a play yet. We do know there's a crackling Drake hiding out. So far, Scarin, or In Ingram rather, opting not to use that Faithless Looting until he finds something a bit more appealing. Yeah, you kind of you need these lands in order to play the crackling Drake, and you don't want to discard spells either. So until you figured out what the heck's going on, you can probably just wait. You definitely know there's something weird happening in this Birds of Paradise Duress Eternal Witness deck. So, Pete Ingram has asked for the Oracle text on Hakan Stromgald's Scourge. Maybe because, maybe because he's seen it on the side tables oh, as yeah. well. That's the 
that's the single drawback of having a triple Hakon team. Yeah, the third guy will know it's coming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's time for this. Uh, I'll go ahead and say this is a crackling, Drake. This one only crackles. All right. Give it a minute. Give it a minute. It Again, never does the, this. The storm will build up. Just give it a minute. It's just, it's got to warm up. All right. Up. Good. We have you it know. on the screen now. So, Hakan, you may play it, Hakan, from your graveyard, but not anywhere else. I like that it doesn't just say not from your hand. It's not from anywhere else. You can't cast it from your deck. Oh, you can't yeah. can't cast it from exile. Oh, yeah. Hakon, Hakon knows what he's about. And I can, I can respect that. A swing in from Eternal Witness, 2-1. Pete, not going to risk trading that with, a, with removal. He'll take the two. I believe we have Iona in hand for Mark Larson. Yeah, there's a gift sun given in here. Why would you not just have unbearable rights and a couple of colossal game-ending things to put in? We have that? Eleshnorn, Iona, you know, Hakan. The Yuge. <laughs> the Yuge. I can't imagine having this much fun in a Magic tournament. Yeah. It, this just seems this great. Is, it was a Wrath of God. You were right. All right, all right, see, I know it's white bordered. Up on the top table, Dan Jessup takes game one. How dare he? Yeah. How dare he? I think they've figured out they're the bad guys. Nameless inversion, Hakan, Iona, and Wrath of God in hand for Mark Larson. <laughs> We just get to see Wait, Larson. He, he he's duressing himself. No, oh, well, he's Iokang himself. He's Iokang himself. He's Iokang his own Hakan into the graveyard. Strong. Well, he has Nameless Inversion in hand. Hold on. This is actually, this is quite good. We got a reader. Okay. We got a reader. Okay. Oh, this is so good. So much that Oracle text. One more land, and we have two. Oh, I'm I'm just so about this game right now. This is, this is so good. Whew. Whew. What a world. Can you believe we get to do this? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, now on Pete Ingram's side, he draws a fifth land, has Lightning Bolt, Arclight Phoenix. He, he may just try to stop all this nonsense before it starts. I will be so cross with him if he does. Just let the, <laughs> just let the guy do his thing. Just, come on, Yeah, Pete. come on. You know you're the baddies. <laughs> just give it up. <laughs> it's not your fault, but it is what it is. Arclight Phoenix and Crackling Drake swing in the Drake Crackling what looks like for four. Or make that five. Yeah, two Faithless Looting, a Gut Shot, Serum Visions, and Thought Scour. It's five, total of eight damage. Might be seeing a Nameless Inversion on this Arclight Phoenix, just gain a couple points of life effectively. That is going to be the play. Arclight Phoenix is in the graveyard. So just five damage. Mark drops to ten. And he'll pass. That part, though, with the two damage. Correction, Mark goes to nine. Could, I, looks like it's going to cost him here. He d as he misses the land drop. So he can't Wrath uh, of God just yet. This is rough. This is, ooh, yeah. there's a Noble Hierarch. That's a combination with this Wrath of God. <laughs> it's a second white. <laughs> it both we got casts him. Wrath of God and embarrasses you for playing it. Well, guess we have to cast the Hakan out of the graveyard. Oh, we got it. Do you register it not to cast it? And Pete bolts it. Man. The rudest. Here is a flashback of Faithless Looting. It looks like a oh, pair of a lightning bolt. bolts. Uh, that'll do. Yeah, bolts that'll bring do. the mark down to six. Cracking Drake will swing in for the remaining points. Pete Ingram takes the win in game one. By the end of that, that was definitely a thunder and lightning Drake. Big. Yeah. Big the Big. What a storm. That Drake's just... I, I'm going to run this choke into the ground, whether you're okay with it or not. Sideboards. It's nice. It's nice. All right. Well, I mean, who knows what's in the sideboard? I kind of am upset that the sideboard isn't 15 one ofs. I'm going to be honest here. Yeah, Mark's, Mark's sideboard has more duplicates than his main deck. <laughs> that's true. That's true. He has three cards. All the ones in his sideboard, I do appreciate that none of these are cards that are in the main. They're just, they're just, it is clearly, ten, you know. Clearly a man of taste. Yeah. I can't I, believe there isn't a customizable unburial rights target here. Yeah, I like have a Gristlebrand or. 
It's eight more, eight more one ofs. Maybe Sun Titan. Tusk Sun counts. Titan. Drag Tusk could count. Right? Do you think he's casting Sun Titan or, or unbarrel writing it? And Sun Titan gets Hakan out of the graveyard. Do you think I know what goes on <laughs> with this deck, Matthias? Do you well, have, I think I have any idea what happens every game? No one. Well, does. he he's, doesn't. Yeah, he's spinning the roulette, he, and you're asking. He me plays if a I Birds know. of Paradise, and then he casts some cards, and sometimes they do things. Technically. It's a nice deck. All right. This deck's sweet. I'm assuming the way to sideboard on his side is of these, you know, about 30 different one-ofs. He's going to pick eight of them to be in the sideboard. The Probably the eight that don't do as much. This this deck this is, is a, a deep, deep analogy. Of all the decks, you know, sometimes when you want to conceal how you're sideboarding, you'll put all 15 in. Oh, that would just confuse you. Out. Oh, you're done -zo. Yeah. You have to go to the judge's statement. All right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Per... Mark Larson, we have him in our heads right now. It's Hoken is broken, and we have to call it that for the rest of the match. I don't. Make is that for rules. all three, or is that just the gifts? I don't. Build? Which one do you think's broken? Obviously, the I gifts. Know, all build. of them. Uh, this one. This one's extra broken. Oh yeah, this one is. Something has come loose. <laughs> so how do you play against it on Pete, Pete's side when your opponent's playing Highlander, Hoken? I'm you almost want to ignore him. it, right? Yeah, just you're just like, aggressive. I don't know what you're doing. I'm going to... Like, Anger of the Gods in theory is okay. Maybe. I, I'm kind of looking at that. Maybe looking at Surgical. You can make a case for Ral. Is it Viceroy are you out if you're of, trying to grind? Are you just going to, like, out of frustration, just not sideboard? Honestly? I'm if, pretty into that line. Yeah, if I were playing an aggro deck, there's a strong chance I check my deck for anything that is stone dead. But eh. otherwise, I'm just trying to kill him. Let's be linear. And Hakan is on the board over on the third table. Jack Granin takes game one over Frank Skarin. What can we say? Hogan's broken. But not that one. That one's just reasonable. Hogan's just reasonable does not roll off the tongue, Matthias. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like I think, it. At I all. think we can make it rhyme. It's that's called a that's called a slant rhyme. What? <laughs> yeah, look, look, it's poetry. It, it, it's poetry. Don't only worry about technically it. Technically poetry. So, like, how do you. Is it like Hoken is fine? Oaken? Is that how you make it rhyme? Yeah. Ho 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 Hoken is reasonable here. Hoken is reasonably broken? Ah? Yeah, no, that's, just, that's just actually a rhyme, right? Y yeah. Yeah, you know, like most <laughs> rhymes. It's a really slanty most rhyme. Don't worry are about it. It's actually rhymes. That's how they work. That's why we use the word to describe it. <laughs> Once you've seen Nameless Inversion, Hakan Stromgold Scourge, do you want to have any, some graveyard hate? Surgical Extraction, Anger of the Gods? Maybe? I mean, it feels like if, there's something going on in the graveyard Hakan, here. If you see someone Inquisition themselves to put a card in yeah. the graveyard, you got to be thinking there, about Surgical There was an Iona extraction. in his hand, right? Okay, this is probably... <laughs> I guess you should probably port it a search. Yeah, card. honestly, it couldn't hurt, really. <laughs> like, who knows? <laughs> Maybe Mark doesn't even draw any of those cards this game. Your opponent's either trying to reanimate it or is playing, you know, Angel Ramp. Oh, yeah. Who knows? Like, it, would you even be surprised in Ingram's seat if next game you just got Siege rhino <laughs> I'm not even sure there's not a Siege Rhino in there right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have the list, and I wouldn't be surprised if there was Siege Rhino. Oh, yeah. Your opponent just straight up goes Bird into Manus Rider into Siege Rhino into Karanos. Why not? So, in the month of January, our latest addition to the Creature Collection. Speaking of... <laughs> I, I, I got it's nothing. It's a collection. It's a collection. <laughs> Speaking of collecting things, we, you can collect things. So you can collect back. this cat. Yeah, <laughs> you thought you thought the cat was gone. No, now from game night to the creature collection, it's available on playmat sleeves and player bundles. He's fighting Hakon off in the background. Oh wow! He's doing a very good job. <laughs> you can find that and previous creature collections at StarCityGame.com/slash/creaturecollection. Doing his best. Has to get home and lay on some clean laundry, you know? Are they like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the quest. Collect the Dragon Balls? No. We just want to wash the Dragon Balls and lay on them. <laughs> Looks like a mulligan here on Pete's side as we get ready for the second game. And Birds of Paradise to start out again for Mulligan. That is a nice Birds of Paradise. Fourth edition? Can we 
Is that what we're looking at? Uh, I don't believe that's a white border. A fourth edition isn't white border. You're right. I believe it that could is be, beta. Could be, oh, it might it could be, be, Ita it it could be, be Italian. Yeah. Right. The early sets. I think the the foreign fourth editions are black border. You know what? This, this is obviously a man who cares about style points. I'm going to believe it's beta because that makes me happier. It's the reality I choose to live in. Oh, no. Is that a white border? Was I wrong? Now it's unclear. Oh, gosh. This bird is broken. <laughs> Birds is broken. Birds are broken. <sighs> How do you feel about white-bordered cards that I take a Sharpie to? Does that count? Yeah. Oh, I like that. And you, everyone everyone has had some. That, yes, I can confirm this is a 4th edition sharpie to Birds of Paradise. More like a 4th edition gut shot at Birds of Paradise. Well, that, that is also true. <laughs> <laughs> Pete Ingram opted to gut shot. I'm so ready for Pete Ingram against this Birds of Paradise Ewit deck to get Celestial Purged and just kind of <laughs> throw his hands up and go, yeah, I mean, I guess. Like, why not? <laughs> why wouldn't this just happen? Raven's Crime from Mark Larson. Serum Visions being the worst card yeah. in your opponent's hand is a little spooky. Yeah, it's interesting what why that would be the the discard. Classic overgrowth. Yeah, I was just saying into fountain. fountain, right? <laughs> Classic. Pressure on Mark Larson. Dan Jessup gets the first match win, a two zero with Bant Spirits. Boo, boo. Yeah, the bad guys. It's the not, bad guys take a match. It's not their fault. I like them personally. I know them, but boo. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the old woman in Princess Bride. <laughs> Boo! Boo! This game, however, is going going decently for Mark. It's true. Mark is not currently dying. Yeah. And that is a strict upgrade from what we just saw. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Niles Spellbomb from Mark Larson. Leaves up the black mana. Mark has kind of identified I, that he just needs to go along and it'll be fine. I love these watching these games. Mark's deck just kind of plays some cards and, you know... What's going to happen next? Okay, Tomb into Fountain, Nile Spellbomb. Oh, hey, we have a black man to leave up. This all seems reasonable. I'm really excited because I feel like Mark has, like, recaptured high school magic. Where you go to the lunch table, he's you don't <laughs> even know what your opponent's going to play. It's just kind of what they got out of some packs. He's even got the fourth head cards with Sharpie <laughs> on them. Because <laughs> I know that was a thing in high school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you, do you think we can move the cameras, like, under the cafeteria I, steps or something? I have some lightning bolts that at one point I had red-bordered with a Sharpie that I had was told oh. were not tournament legal. Oh I know. Gosh. Isn't that tragic? Scum. Yeah. Scum. <laughs> Who does that? Who looks at a kid and is like, well, we got to make sure this kid plays by the rules. <laughs> like, you you weren't very good at sharpening them, so you bled through to the edges of the card and you you marked them all. Oh, my I was God. Like, yeah, and then I look at him like, yeah, that's 100% true. <laughs> <laughs> Can I play him anyway? <laughs> this is nice. Classic modern. In-step fetch. Yeah. Get tapped shock. In-step fetch. Get a tapped shock. Yeah. This is nice. He's got two black mana sources so who can go back to Raven's Criming if it gets to that. Ingram's struggling to find a threat, and I have a hard time imagining that if Mark gets to play all the cards in his deck, that that's good for Pete. Yeah, this person who's playing four color nonsense, if you give them enough time, will probably do something that's hard There's, to beat. Is this only four colors? It is, is there only red? four colors. There's, There's no, no red. red. There's no red. I'm a big fan of decks with terrible mana bases trying to do a hundred things. Usually, red's the card you, that do, doesn't always make it into the deck. I'm a little upset. Like, what's the real cost here? I feel like you just should. Ghost? I like that we found room for Ghost Quarter. Ghost Quarter and Kalatas here. Do you here. not play that in your, I assume, <laughs> what is a Life from Loam deck? Is there a Loam? Yeah. Okay, oh yeah, there's a Raven's Crime. There's got to be a Loam. Oh, do we have some Academy Ruins nonsense with it? Look, you you can't let anything stop the, the entire grind process, yeah, right? We, you have to be able to reset. Academy Ruins. I was hoping we'd have some Crucible Academy Ruins. Is there a Gaia's Blessing? Can we just start over oh if it gets gosh. to that point? I hope not. 
we're going to die how, here. How can we be the slowest? And Kalatas is going to get two cards from I Ingram. It's Is it Charm and Lightning Bolt to take care of the 3-4. That card's horrifying. It's it's something that's really hard to find room for when you're building your own deck, but whenever your opponent plays one, you just kind of feel your stomach drop. Now, Mark's having to deal with the fact right now this deck pulls in a lot of directions. Last two draws were Iona and Damnation. He does... <laughs> he it the happened. It happened. It happened. Get out of there, Arclight Phoenix. <laughs> of course, we we have Celestial Purge. You know the worst for Pete is he... This happened, and he's looking over at this Nile spell bomb. Yeah. He's like, oh, God. I gotta run another Arclight Phoenix into this. It's a swing from a second Arclight Phoenix. There's a removal spell of... There's some sort murderous of Delve ca cut. card. Is it cut? It is Murderous Cut. That Look, plus Nile spell cuts bomb. the card that didn't quite fit in the spell section of oh, the deck Oh, okay, list. yeah. I see it there. Always been a Murderous Cut fan. Do you think he has Dark Confidant great. to combo with it? That's a lot of damage. <laughs> <laughs> murderous Cut, delving one to take care of the Arclight Phoenix, leaves up a land here, and now Crackling Ooh. Drake. The issue with Crackling Drake is that Nile spell bomb doesn't actually shut it down. Is that an issue with Crackling Drake or a good thing? No, an about issue Crackling for Mark Drake. with Crackling Drake yeah, is that yeah, yeah. he can't he can't turn this one off. Yeah, I think that's what they call a feature, not a bug. Now he does still have that damnation left, right? Yeah, so yeah, there's there's fine. more removal in the wings. Eventually Mark is going to do something. Yeah. This sure is a weird obs on deck. Just you know, it's playing the all removal spell game. Breeding pool, of course. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we haven't gotten that one yet. Kali Toss Staple. Look, look there are, cool. in our four code deck, there are six different shock lands we can play. So we only have four of them. I'm surprised we, we got have, three more to go. Why don't we Two just more to have go. the seventh for the hay of it? We do have one of all six and four basics. <laughs> one of each. So it's just because it's Highlander, right? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is, I swear, I feel like I'm reading binary code. Uh -huh. It's like one, 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 one. I'm waiting there for There aren't the even zero. zeros. There are. There are zeros on the main deck and sideboard portion. You just didn't fill them in. It's complicated. Yeah. It's complicated. It's a big number in binary. <laughs> I wouldn't want something about the deck list to embarrass him, so let's not say that. Damnation from Mark. Now, he doesn't have triple black, so he can't leave up the activation of well, Spellbomb, but he makes he Noble Hierarch. He can't leave up the trigger, but he can yeah. still Tormod's Crypt it. Remember when I said he's either playing Reanimator or Angel Ramp? So... We have this Iona <laughs> in hand. <laughs> and I'm just saying, we're kind of... <laughs> you know, there's a mana cost on it. I, That's a thing you can do. So, I just feel like we're watching a car rev its engine slowly. You know, and you can hear the gears shift. Yeah. Every time the gear shift is a land drop. And eventually... We get to seventh gear and an Iona hits the table. He's got a tough thing, right? So he either or he no, either Iona's can ramp. Nine drop. She's nine. It's real. It's oh. it's really not castable. Good. Gr no, she's yeah. She's a seven seven that costs nine. So you either can make your land drops to build up to nine, or you can discard lands to Raven's Crime. We and do have ten colored sources. Okay, and three of so them are white. If right, because we have yeah, we, yeah have, we have all three of the white shocks. We have multiple white lands in our okay. deck. Okay, we can cast this. Now, he might still get bounced by the guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we got to start. First, we got to make the nine Ooh, drop. Here's, here's the best part about Iona. She later chump blocks a Woken Horror. 7-7. Seven, seven, <laughs> almost good. Does not line. beat 7-8. Seven, not eight. Beat seven, eight. You could say creatures have gotten a little more powerful in the last it, 10 years. nine drop does line up poorly against the opponent's two drop. What a world. What a yeah. sentence. <laughs> what a sentence. What a sentence. Right, that used to be when you do something like play a six drop and then chump their timer go with it. And you're like, man, this is dumb. I hate hey. this. Creeping, Creeping tar pit. Creeping right, of we course. We have a kill con. We have That's a land kill con. seven. Here's Faith is looting from Frank. Uh-oh. Thing in the ice. My looking, trying to become thing out of the ice. Oh, no. Oh, no. Discard's lightning axe and a land. He's got lightning bolt in hand. And it looks like Surgical Extraction, so we can transform this and awake this horror if it comes to it. I'm so used to seeing games go this long and just kind of thinking to myself, wow, I wonder if they sideboarded out Hakon or something. But there are so many one-ofs. Do you actually really know if, you haven't even, if he hasn't seen those cards yet? His deck doesn't have a ton of selection. So 
Uh. Yeah, so here's the surgical. Pete knows what's coming. Can you look? You can see it on their face. What do you mean? There's not another one. Now he's showing it to his partner. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he, it's like, no, this guy's playing a different build of Hakan. Of Hakan. That's what they just realized now. Oh, <laughs> look yeah. at look at Dan Jessup's face here. Just looking at us when they go through the deck. Oh, we're the bad guys. <laughs> I see. <laughs> oh. Uh oh. <laughs> At this point, Pete looking at maybe just, yeah, bolt upstairs, transform. There's a chance that Larson maybe should have cracked the bomb with the trigger on the stack. Does he have removal that can kill an 0-4 but not a 7-8? A fine question. A fine question. Uh, it doesn't actually appear so, so I guess this was fine. He's going to crack Nile Spellbomb, exile away Pete's graveyard, draws a card. It looks to be a land, going to one. Not zero. One Not more zero. draw is... Eternal, Eternal Witness. All right. That is a great draw here. Eternal Witness. We take those. We take yeah, those. Now, now there's still burn spells that can kill him from here. That but, is, look, but this will keep him alive. Never tell me the odds. You know, he's either going to get another turn or he won't. That uh, feels 50, like those are the odds. 50-50 shot. 50-50 yeah. shot. It happens or Ooh, it doesn't. It's a land, but it's a fetch land. We have a word for that in the yeah. business. It's beats. It's called not a land. Here's Eternal Witness. Is that another surgical? Oh, another surgical, right. Yikes. Yikes. So Eternal Witness won't get anything back. It can chump block. There's a point here where Larson is likely interested in getting busy with this creeping tar pit. It's a little risky. Yeah, murderous cut was uh, that was the attempted play from Eternal Witness. Wish we'd gotten frisky with the tar pit. That's how you win this game. You chump, and block. then maybe you chump again. But white card. Is that drunk. timely reinforcements? Oh, 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 wow. Oh, wow. A timely draw for Mark Larson. Goes back up to seven, gets three one ones. Tar pit beats. Tar oh, pit yeah. beats. Oh, I'm in. Tar pit beats. Absolutely. Huge draw. Keeps Mark Larson in the game. It's a good thing he didn't. Uh, oh, oh. Here we go. Here we go. And he passes. He's not interested oh, in creeping my. tar pit attacks. That's a bit surprising to me. He would be dead next turn if he just started going for it. Here's another thing in the ice. Yeah, it looks like he's got his eyes set on this Iona. Maybe missing oh. a line with Creeping Tar Pit, but... Thinking about if still he wanted recover, to fetch yeah. there, and I'm pretty sure he thought, no, I can't afford to thin those out of my deck. I need to draw lands here. Right. He definitely has a, is you know focused on that Iona play. Here is Knight of the Reliquary. Ooh, that is. Well, that'll get him to nine. That is a big girl. Whew. Yeah, getting a count here. We'll do the same. I believe that was three. She is. And now Tarpit joins there in. That's down go. to six. There we go. This knight's almost bigger than Thing in the Ice. Awoken Horror, rather. Uh-oh. Four mana is Crackling Ooh. Drake. And remember, we have to look at that exile pile again because Crackling Drake counts exile. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is uh, this is not good. Well, Mark's on tapping with Knight of the Reliquary. So now we got some more one-ofs to look at. We got <laughs> Okay. <laughs> right. There might be some plays. We can maybe eventually do sham. Ooh, ooh, if we fetch up an Urborg, this Misty taps for mana. Okay. I mean, we can't just ramp into the Iona, right? We have four, eight, nine. That That is nine. He'd have to fetch a basic with Misty Rainforest, tap it, sacrifice it to get a Plains for the third white source, and then tap all the lands for Iona? Yikes. 
other option, if he really doesn't want to pay life, he can sack. He can ghost quarter himself, basic and get basic planes, and then float white, sack the new land for Urborg, and then tap the Misty Rainforest for black. Right. It is complex, yeah. and it's a lot of hoops to jump through to gain one life. But it, this line exists. <laughs> Looks like a blue card is the other card. Yeah, he has picked up a blue card for the turn. There aren't too many of those in his deck. Teferi, Jace, Snapcaster. I believe it's Snapcaster Mage. Ooh. If he can Damnation, that would be pretty big here. Yeah, it's a, a, sh a shame that he has to, would have to lose the Knight of the Reliquary, but with Iona in hand, that might just be worth it. It is Snapcaster Mage. It is four sacks of land, maybe going for five. Does he have something bigger in the graveyard? Interesting. Something we might have forgotten about. Or is he just sacrificing a land to go and get that third white source? Just doing that before casting the damnation. Looks yeah, like that's the case. Makes sense. A little bit of filtering. So now he's on eight lands. He'll lose the Knight of the Reliquary. He'll lose the team. He has triple white. He just needs one more land for Iona. Or just two hits with Creeping Tarpet. <sighs> if he attacks with it. Yeah. This uh, is close. It looks like he's going to get this one. I know. It, it does. It's, this is real close when it looked real not close for All a right. minute there. Manamorphose from Pete is the draw. Gets him a second shot at a card. Top no! one is Thing in the Ice. Okay. All right. He's still on. It's He's still it, alive. You know, you know what this card doesn't do? Block. It doesn't block. And then, you know, transforming it in one go seems to be pretty hard. And <gasps> Marsh Flat. So is it Creeping Tarpet or Iona from Mark Larson? I think we're going to see Iona. It's got to be Iona. I'm, I'm not positive which is the right play, but Iona's the play. All right. And I think you'd name blue here because the only way you can transform thing in the ice would have to take blue cards, right? Uh, theoretically, you also could end up with a Manamorphose turn. <sighs> okay, so is red safer? That could end up being rough. Uh, the nice thing about naming red is it cuts off Ingram's chance at drawing blockers for Iona, which is lethal. Okay, it cuts off can't all the Can't draw a Phoenix, a can't draw a Crackling Drake. And Crackling Drake is one of the problem cards in this spot because it just cleanly trades with the Iona and gets Ingram right. up a card. And there's there we then go. the big, the big there drop. There we go. There's, we made it to nine. Angel just, Ramp is successful. I, I swear, we're over here, and I just heard, like, the thunk. He's going to name red. One draw here for Pete. It's a red card. That's not castable. Faithless looting. Not great. And he picks him up. Mark Larson keeps <gasps> it alive. <gasps> taking game <gasps> two. <gasps> Big hug there from Bill Caminos. They, they've got one on the board. Mark has to get a third game. Can we get people For cheering this? Oh on this? Man. Do you think oh we can man. get like, some basketball chants or something <laughs> going on? Frank Scarin ties things up oh. on the other matchup against oh. Jack Grannon. Oh, so many game threes. And unfortunately, Hoken is broken and can't drop another game. No, it cannot. But we'll go look back at the board. Now... Pete Ingram has this time actually seen the entire deck because he's surgical. So now he's, he's, he's going with Jessup, who saw the deck during the game, yep. and together they're re-sideboarding this. Yeah, you're probably going to be seeing some more, you know, maybe Disdainful Stroke to answer these big clunky spells that we saw. Yeah. Kali Toss, Iona, Damnation. We saw some big Even things. Murderous Cut, you know, it, this yeah. is kind of a big stuff deck. Disdainful Stroke does look good now. Yep. The, the hardest thing that is kind of hard really difficult to evaluate if you want it or not is spell pierce here i would lean towards bringing it in huh. but larson has so many lands and so many dorks and creatures that yeah. there's a high chance it just ends up not working when out your opponent you. is doing things like eternal witness knight of the reliquary kalatas i wouldn't want it I mean, this is the problem of a deck of you know 31 of says yeah there's draws or spell pierce will be great and it can also be terrible yeah it's really they know as well as we do 
A card I'm interested in is that Ral is it Viceroy, actually. Yeah, I love it. It's very grindy. It lets Ingram actually do something against all of this spot removal. If he just had a Planeswalker ticking up and doing Planeswalker things that whole time, it would have been a very different game. Well, wait, this Hakan, any Highlander deck like this is just going to play out in a lot of ways, like a mid-range deck. And the more mid-range this gets, Ral fits into that strategy. Yeah, exactly. It's not like Larson is actually killing Ingram anytime quickly. No, that he had made a 9-drop 7-7 seven, seven that game. I guess theoretically he can make a turn 4 Iona. That's the fastest he can do anything that might quote-unquote yeah. close the door. And into three surgical extractions? I'm not even sure how much Mark goes for plays like that. Oh, Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm just trying to drive home the point. Larson is not fast. No, not at all. This, these black-green attrition decks take the game pretty late. Creeping Tar Pit is a proper Planeswalker killer, though. That card's nice. That card is very good at really just giving Planeswalkers the business. <laughs> game number three here, Ingram and Larson. Looks like keeps on both sides. Oh, sevens. <laughs> you know what else is two sevens? Iona's power and toughness. Oh, wow. Just how, <laughs> how timely. It's all a conspiracy. How about that timely reinforcements from last game? Oh, hopefully there's a timely reinforcements this game. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. With all of Larson's shock glance, it's so easy. You just put yourself like one point lower than the yeah. opponent and then shoot back up. Looks Love like it. Larson does have that one of Celestial Purge in hand again. Now, he did start on Creeping Tar Pit, the so who knows? The Planeswalker Killer. <laughs> you will address it by its title. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Planeswalker Killer, sir. It has, <laughs> yeah. Serum Visions for Pete. Tops a Lightning Axe. Oh, yeah, he is, he is all about this mid-range oh. lifestyle. Oh. Look at that. S look at that celestial purge. You know it's what that's nice. gonna do, don't you? Exile. Whatever. Exile a red card. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> it wants. <laughs> or a black permanent. It's nice. It's a they versatile. Have, they have any of those? No. I don't think he has. No, okay. not at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. You can you exile. You can exile surgical extraction. I'm pretty sure that works. There's probably some way in Legacy to make it a permanent. <laughs> I don't I'm know sure how, there's some card out but, there that's going to, like, you know. Something that lets it become an artifact and then March of the Machines <laughs> happens. It, in it involves liquid metal coating at some point. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, naturally. And somehow it's correct to do it with some obscure 11 card commander combo. I like those sorts of things. You just go to message boards about magic and then you start seeing these things. Oh, yeah. It's nice. There's a whole thing on Reddit about unplayable magic combos and you should see how deep and frivolous some of the cards are. <laughs> First play might just be an Arclight Phoenix or Drake from Ingram. Yeah, both are available. We'll see what she goes toward first. It's Arclight Phoenix. That's... That looks like a nice target for a Celestial Perch. My grandma, what an exiled phoenix you have. Boom. Gifts ungiven in Mark Larson's hand as well. And you know what else? Nameless inversion. <laughs> <laughs> so it is. I don't... <laughs> That's a rough one in this matchup. <laughs> hey, that card is going to take away that Drake's creature type. It will be crackling it will be, nothing. It will be, <laughs> it will be crackling... It's noun. like lightning without any clouds. Crackling noun. Crackling nondescript force of nature. If the second nameless inversion mm -hmm. doesn't work out either, that's real painful. <laughs> Let's go back over to Pete's side. So it looks like he's got... He'll start with Thought Scour. Uh-oh. Hitting that Arc Light Phoenix is real nice here. Yeah. Which he did. That's one spell this turn. Drew is it charm off the Thought Scour. Think he'll be able to get to three spells. That seems likely. Yeah, it doesn't seem. I mean, there's a Manamorphose hiding out in there, and Manamorphose is basically three spells in a can. You never know yeah. how it's going to happen, but it always does. So here's the issue, but there's no surgical in his hand. And there's a gifts ungiven in Mark's. <laughs> and this could all go wrong. In in the words of Lady Gaga, I love it. <laughs> I love it. 
Frank is that goes Metamorphose or Spell too. No, he actually does have Is it Charm, so he has a counter spell for Gifts Ungiven. Oh, potentially he hits the and other Metamorphose. Wow, 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 wow! That's so strong here because this lets Pete just oh and, and draws into Surgical. A huge wow. turn for Pete. Can you believe Lady Luck is being such a bad and guy right now? He had Gifts Ungiven covered. It didn't have a cover to start the turn. Now has it covered a couple different ways. Oh yeah, this is this They're is nice. nonsense. This is wild. So that Manamorphos card again. Who Mark, you know? Mark, gosh darn it. Yeah, very it's fair. A, Just makes the format better. Gifts Ungiven attempted, and Pete fast with the counter spell for it. And poor Mark could have cast an Isle spell bomb last turn and didn't, so he could set up this Gifts Ungiven. Well, he still will have some play, right? He does have Nameless Inversion and Nihil Spellbomb, so he can permanently get rid of this Arclight Phoenix. Right. It's just The alternative is he just would still have a free Nameless Inversion, yeah. you know? Yeah. It, an unfortunate setup there is going to hurt Mark. Bright side. We got some timely reinforcements. It looks like he's called for reinforcements. All right. <laughs> <He'll> <laughs> They One, shall come. The reinforcements shall come, and they will bring aid with them, <laughs> bearing three, six life points. Three Aaron Barriches. Big Aaron Barrich fan. Each, each of them come from a Kabira crossroads. <laughs> Together they gain him six life. With their powers combined. <laughs> Mark shocks down to 19 for Godless Shrine. And he'll go down to 16 again off Arclight Phoenix. And now here is Crackling Drake from Ingram. Draws him a card. And passes right in hand. Looks like two Lightning Axe and one other. We will namelessly... Murderous oh, that's Murderous cut. cut on the Crackling Drake. Having a hard time deciding what exactly to exile here. I just love the style stack. First, you got to kill their things, then you got to exile the yard because you just you want them gone. Oh yeah, it's about sending it's a message. It's about look. I want to, I want to get to the point where you go after the lands next too. <laughs> just just get, just get it all. All of it needs to be in exile. And to think you, just, you were complaining about all the Grixis prison decks you just, earlier. You just I like to just clean things up. You know, you just just all the cards. Just get them into exile. Matthias, buddy, are you okay? Do you need to is talk to someone? I'm here. This is you nice. Know? We're, I'm here Here's Birds weekend. of Paradise. I'm here for you. <laughs> <laughs> so now he's got one percent. So Niall Spellbomb's in play. Look, this is just, it's going to be so tidy in just a second. The last card is the Nameless Inversion. Takes care of Arclight Phoenix. Beautiful. Delicious. All Everything's in the graveyard, and it's just going to be... Be tucked away. There's a point where maybe Mark wanted to consider cracking Nile spell bombs still inside of combat in case Pete had another one in his hand. Sure. Now, one thing that Pete does have is that sideboard Ral is it Viceroy, and this is the kind of board that we were saying it was going to be so good on. Yep. Oh yeah. The it's actually a little bit awkward because uh, we have Mr. Planeswalker Killer the there in the back, and we have three Planeswalker Killers up front as well. We do. And a uh, a Planeswalker. Kind of looking to get killed. Well, except that Planeswalker in that plus one on the turn found a lightning bolt. Yikes. He activates Tar, but he's going to go for the Ral. But Bolt is going to take care of it. So a swing of six at Ral. And there's plenty of answers. Bolt and two lightning axes. But Pete will use lightning bolt on the creeping Tar Pit. It feels horrendous on Mark's side, but you kind of got to go for it, right? Yeah. Pete's not just going to jam it and not have an answer to save it. He's n it's, he's no slouch, right? He's right. not just discarding planeswalkers for nothing. I mean, your other option is to not attack it. That seems worse, Exactly, right? exactly. You kind of just got to make them do it, go through the motions a little bit. I mean, you could just send the tokens if you, if you just had the read, but that's... You're where does that even get yeah, you? Yeah, you're not actually doing anything in that case putting Ral down to four who yeah. cares right he just rolls up one every turn and draws even cards. if you eventually kill it that way he draws five cards in the process that's not worth it plus one from Ral, gut shot and land gut shot into hand for pete do you need to keep an eye on the clock as just under six minutes now in the round and if we run out of time 
you'll actually see the team of Jessup, Ingram, Scarin take the whole match as they only have one of their three matches completed at the moment. Right. If neither of these finishes, it is most match wins. Exactly. Exactly. Things are looking pretty rough for Larson here with Pete just having a Planeswalker and a wall of removal. Yeah, the Planeswalker's done a lot of damage on this board. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Land number six, the draw for Mark. Seventh mana with that bird. We basically okay. can just cast Iona at this point. <laughs> We're just like two away. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> you are right. <laughs> and Pete using some gut shots to take care of some tokens. How good would Elishnorn be? And again, we see Surgical Extraction countering Eternal Witness. Uh, seeing this happen two games in a row is rough. It is just rough. Yeah. You know, in a sense here, Eternal Witness is still getting a card, but this isn't the card you wanted. Right? Yeah, and it looks like what Larson's considering here is he could just spell bomb himself to make sure those gifts stay in his deck. Okay. But when you see Ingram with all these Arc Light Phoenixes with these yeah. faithless lootings, what do you? No, you can't. Do I don't that. think you it's can spend realistic. it that way. It's too. It's too valuable of a card to use yeah. in that way. You're right. You're right. Surgical Extraction was the play. But now there are th there's three power of creatures against the Ral. In theory, you can start to deck making progress on it. Theoretically, yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Planeswalker Killer left the building. Yeah. It's very bad when there's. It a was basically you killed kill. by the Planeswalker. Listen, <laughs> listen. I don't know how that works. Keep that to yourself. <laughs> Mr. Planeswalker Killer does not appreciate <laughs> it. Right. thing in the ice was the find off from Ral this turn. The issue here is Pete has just found so much gas off this Ral. Yeah, it's... It's seriously... Ral's taken, what, six damage or something at this point and started at five? So he's drawn five cards or something? Faith saluting flashback brings thing in the ice, thaws it down to three counters. And it's not even just random cards. It's a sleight of hand every turn. Yeah. They're good cards. Yeah, exactly. At this point, Pete's definitely got to be feeling somewhat in control of this game, even if it's a little bit cluttered, and he's starting to kind of get to that territory of, all right, I feel like I've won this game. How do I just make sure that I don't lose this game? Second thing in the ice from Pete. Looks like Assassin's Trophy. Unfortunately, Plains Island is what is available when he draws the Assassin's Trophy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, I hate it when that happens. Because, of course. Polluted Delta appears to be the draw for the turn. For a moment, that Polluted Delta looked like a Deceiver Exarch, and I just thought, you know, why yeah. not? And Assassin's Trophy finally gives... Larson an answer to Rail, but the damage has been done. It's possible, you look at the remaining cards in Ingram's hand of just a, looks like just two instants, that a Damnation could clean up this board. Damnation would do a lot here, and let's see, is there anything else, maybe engineered explosives, something to that effect? Let's see if Mark gets the chance. Pete attempting to transform this turn, leads on Manamorphose. I don't think he has it. He has Lightning Bolt. He was hoping to get a spell. He drew into Arclight Phoenix. That... That's not it's bad. still good. That's pressure. That's yeah. pressure. Here's that swing for three. That also makes it so flipping the things is lethal. The bolt would have kept right. it that way anyway, but now it's just Mark knows it. It's on the table. It's not even hidden information anymore. Two cards from Larson with Pierce Polluted Delta. A lot it, of mana being wrath, tapped, maybe. Verdict. Liliana of the Veil. Yikes. That actually plays here, right? He'll plus it both players discard. And Jack Granin does win oh his my. match. So this now counts for oh everything. Oh, gosh. One minute is the time on the clock. My heart can't take this. A draw likely knocks them both out. Right. It's possible. Yeah, I don't know the standings. I, I, I wouldn't 
be happy with a draw here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It definitely hurts your odds for top eight and probably ends your tournament. Here's Opt from Frank. Now the thing in the ices are going to start transforming. Draws off it. And I think, right, Bolt upstairs, Mark down to 10. That'll transform. He can pick up and recast Arclight Phoenix. That should just end things. Yeah, it, this is probably going to do it here. That's going to have Mark down to 10, recast the Phoenix, and Swing 10. for 10, and that is going to be lethal. Pete Ingram takes care of business. Two games to one. He defeats Mark Larson and the team of Dan Jessup. Pete Ingram and Frank Scarin secure their spot into day two. You know, in a matchup that 